Yeah, so I wanted to address some of the comments on my most recent podcast video clip. Um, first of all, thank you for contributing to this very important discussion um, and giving it the attention it deserves, even if it is an opposing viewpoint. And I think, you know, if we are going to start talking about this, there are a few really important factors to consider that are being left out in this argument. And so, um, Let's start with the Equal Pay Act of 1963. So uh, yeah, this is a significant step towards addressing pay disparities, but it hasn't completely eradicated the gap. Um, it prohibits, for those of you who may not be aware of what exactly it states, but it, it prohibits paying men and women differently for equal work, which means that work requires equal skill, effort, and responsibility. However, even with that law enacted, and, and mind you, laws are created because there are such injustices taking place that they had to create punishment as a result of um, hoping to deter people from, from engaging in that action, meaning it was so prevalent that they had to create policy that would uh, reprimand people in a negative way, maybe a, a fine or even imprisonment, um, to hopefully like redirect that action into doing the most just thing. And so even with the Equal Pay Act of 1963, the gap still persists even when looking at men and women in similar roles. So um, another factor would be occupational segregation. And, and for those of you who are unfamiliar with that term, um, occupational segregation is this idea that women and men have a tendency to cluster um, in different industries. So women will predominantly be in lower paying industries such as like education and healthcare, and men have a tendency to dominate higher paying uh, industries such as like technology and finance. So um, occupational segregation is a huge factor in what contributes to the gender pay gap, which I, I will say it is closing. Uh, there has been progress, even if it is at a like very, very, very slow rate. Um, we have seen progress, but coming from a place where women are not even given the right to work, not even given the right to an education, we're being sold for property in recent human history relative to all of human civilization, I think it's important to consider all of these factors, right? That we are coming from this place in history where we weren't even given the right to work, and when we were, we were treated as though you know we are a minority group. Um, and and I will say that the gender pay gap actually exists in a greater disparity with women of color, minority women. So okay, wage discrimination. Um, studies show, it, like the U.S. Census Bureau, the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Even academic studies that are published in journals like the American Economic Review all indicate that um, pay disparities exist even after accounting for factors like education experience and hours worked. Um, and we talked about this in my podcast. This, this next factor is the motherhood penalty. And, and uh, Jeff Quaid actually referred to it um, having been a hiring manager, uh, the VP of HR at Cisco Technologies and, and several other uh, notable companies throughout the course of his career, which spans decades, um, is the, the off-roading and in-roading, right? And so that's what he's saying is like, whenever companies are asking candidates, hey, how much did you get paid at your last job? Well, this is totally not taking into account that like, what about women who have a huge gap in their employment, right? So the, the motherhood penalty especially contributes to a reduction in earnings when, when we have children. Um, and, and men's earnings, on, on contrary, remain largely unaffected by fatherhood. And, and this is linked to biases and expectations around caregiving roles that can contribute to the overall gender pay gap. Um, glass ceiling and promotion. So uh, again, in leadership roles within companies and, and speaking to this they, right, employers, right? Well, so women are largely underrepresented in, in, leader, in leadership and higher paying positions. So, and that's known as the glass ceiling. Um, there have been studies from organizations like 
Catalyst and uh, McKinsey and company that have shown that women continue to face barriers to advancement that contribute to the pay gap. Um, but last but not least, uh, which is one that tends to be my favorite one to point out is this idea of the cumulative effect. So over a woman's lifetime, the cumulative impact of the gender pay, pay gap can be significant. So when women start off at a lower earning and women are less likely to negotiate for themselves, um, they are more likely to accept a lowball offer. Um, they never catch up, right? And so that's what we're talking about in this video, that lower earnings also result in lower retirement savings, social security benefits, and they also lead to increased financial vulnerability for older women. Um, all of this is not just prevalent in the United States. This exists globally. It is not just a U.S. thing. It is data from the World Economic Forums on the Global Gender Gap Report and other international sources um, are all in support that this is a major issue. In fact, it is um, being discussed at the UN level, right, as like one of the initiatives to uh, like create more global sustainability. Um, Women are being violently like assaulted and murdered in some countries. Like I feel so fortunate to be able to get an education, to go to school, to, to have like freedom of speech and like choose who I get to marry or if I wanna marry. Um, okay, so yeah, just in conclusion, the gender pay gap is a really, really complex issue and it can't be dismissed solely on the existence of the Equal Pay Act of 1963. And despite legal pr protections, various factors like occupational segregation, wage discrimination, biases, societal expectations, all contribute to the gender pay gap. And so it's really essential that we acknowledge these complexities and work towards a more equitable and inclusive society where everyone receives fair compensation regardless of their gender. Again, thank you for engaging in this important conversation and um, I hope this has been enlightening.